think uh, to read, it's hard to read a book called uh, the, the Path of Celtic, Celtic Path of Prayers. And just because of my Celtic roots and the, the, the Scottish background, I kind of have this interest in that, but it, it's, a, it's been a healthy interest because it's helped me to understand a little better how um, uh, they did things different than maybe how we did things, and, and it also has taught me some interesting things this week. The book is written by uh, Calvin Miller, a great author that I uh, met, uh, or that I met a couple years ago uh, during a conference. He's a uh, great preacher, and he talks about in that book, and we'll get to sermon in a second. Uh, uh, this has just been a great week for me in, in this kind of stuff. But uh, in this book, it talks about reading uh, scripture as prayer. And I found this passage of scripture that I want to share with you this morning just for a moment. Because it's, it's all like a testimony for you, hopefully. And uh, I don't know if there's someone struggling this morning or someone that's having a hard time. But maybe I think God's place is upon my heart that I need to share a little piece of scripture to you before we get started. And it's found in Psalm 18, verse, the first three verses of that psalm. And Psalm 18, it says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my mountain, where I seek refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And it goes in verse 3. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I was saved from my enemies. Sometimes, you know, I think we, and it really kind of does relate in lots of ways to, to Mary's life that we're going to look at this morning. But, you know, I think sometimes it's good just to get to hear that, that God is there for our strength. God is there to help us through our tough times and our difficult times. And I probably imagine that there's some of you that are experiencing that this week. I know that I, in my own life, that was an important passage for me to pick up and read this week. And actually, just to sit down and I go, as, you, as I go through, once through it, and just to pray that and say, Lord, thank you for caring about me and loving me and walking with me and taking care of me in tough times. And sometimes, some of you may have had difficulties this week, and I hope that that sort of helps you in, in, in your thinking as well. But as we look at the life of, as we look at the life of Mary, I think we'll, as we consider this, uh, this hero of our faith, this young person who I think we should all really have uh, admire and look to for inspiration, I think it should stir our hearts to know that God takes care of us and God loves us enough, even when we fail, even when we have struggles, even when things don't seem to be going our way. This young lady that, that uh, when called upon, put herself in a very difficult position, as uh, Joyce has already sort of indicated this morning, is very true. She was uh, a very young girl that uh, when uh, put in a difficult position before her family, her friends, and her community, and before the man that she was betrothed to. And what is betrothal? Well, we know that a lot of times we talk about it as engagement. It's a little more than a typical engagement. Because in, some, in, in our world, in our time, if we, if we want to call off an engagement, we just simply say, I don't want to get married. But in this case, she would actually have to go through a divorce already. So they committed themselves to one year um, before uh, officially being married to save themselves, to, to, be, uh, to honor this relationship as though they were already married. And the only difference being that they didn't actually live together and they weren't intimate together. And not only that, so this is the, she's this very young girl that's in a very interesting position. And I want you to realize that she's younger than most of you here, here today. In fact, Mary was 15 years old, roughly, is what think. 15 years old. A 15-year-old little girl, little girl, like Madeline and Tia and some of you others that are here, like Jojo, in your age group, and God sends messenger to him with a very amazing message. And during this period of time, period of engagement, the husband had all the same rights and privileges, not the husband, the betrothed man, that if the girl was unfaithful, he would actually put her there, have her stone to death. So we have a, a very amazing young girl, don't we? Mary, I want 
God called her is a woman of faith. And she is a woman. A young one at that, but she is a young lady that has been put into a situation that I don't think I'd want my daughter put into. Or any of my daughters to put into. Or my son, for that matter. But Mary was a woman of faith. And she handled it quite amazingly. Before we get there, let's begin by praying. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your house this morning. Sing praises to your name, to be, re to be re reminded of the fact that you sent your son into this world, not as a king, not as um, uh, someone of any kind of influence, but as a, as a baby who would come and grow into a man who would give his life to each one of us, so that we would might, might have help. And restore a relationship with you. So, Father, now we just come before you and ask that you to guide our time as we look into your word. And, Father, may we take, take it to our, to, into our hearts and apply it to our lives. And may it make a difference in how we see your, your world around us. I pray for these things in your son's precious name. Amen. So in Luke's Gospel, the second, the first chapter is what we have read this morning, verses one through uh, chapter chapter one, verses twenty six through thirty eight. We're going to go a little bit beyond that, but that, those first twenty six to thirty to, to thirty third verse, we get the situation of what's going on and and the relevance of, of what's happening here. Or and you know you know we I I, I find me it's a it's a, a difficult thing that we would uh, I would that we, any of us would be put into. But Mary handles it quite well. Now, I don't know about you, and I haven't had many angels come and appear to me in, in, the, uh, in any recent times. But this young girl has Gabriel come, the, a messenger from God. And she hears it, his, his, uh, what, what he has to say, and, and te he tells her that you are going to carry the child that is going to be the savior of the world. And you know the fact is that that she's not been intimate with anybody. She's not been been uh, intimate with her, her betrothed. She's not ha had any way to have that happen. But but God provides a way, and we and, and it's amazing that Mary has the faith to be able to believe uh, that this is this is true. What a, what a, what a what a, I I'd say horrible situation to be put into. That God comes before He comes, sends His messenger to you and He says, You are going to bear a child. That you're going to be the carry the Son of, the, of, of God. That you're going to carry the Savior of the world. What do you do with that? I mean, how, what a difficult situation to be put into. And now she has to, you think about it, think about the fact that she would also have to go back and explain this to her, her parents. <coughs> Explain that to Joseph. Explain that to her friends. And what would they do? What would you do if someone came to you and said, God came to me and told me I'm pregnant and I'm going to carry you the Son of God? How would you handle it? What would you, how would you, what would you, what would you do? I know for me, uh, if my daughter came to me, I'd go, really? Sure. Next, we're going to go to the psychologist. <laughs> you know, um, Joseph, and if you read in other sections of Scripture, God, uh, it, God comes to Joseph through a dream and, and explains things to him. But Joseph was willing to, to just put, you know, just to deal with this so quietly and walk away from it. He could have put her to death. He could have had her stoned to death. He could have done me, uh, 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 lots of different things. You know, we, in today's terminology, unwed mothers, at one time at my age, in my, when I was younger, an unwed mother would be looked, frowned upon, but today it's not quite as, as uh, carries the stigma as it, as it has in the past. But even still today, you know, it's not the best thing in the world, and, and uh, it, would have been a, it would have been a difficult thing to have. But we go on to verse 34 through 37, and the, we see that there's a call to faith. Mary asked the angel, How can this be since I have not been intimate with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The 
power of the Most High overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, that to me would have been just like, great, thank you very much. That would have been, you know, you, what are you trying to do in my life? But Mary handles it quite differently. And consider your relative Elizabeth, we go on in verse 36. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. Now, if you know the story, I find that this 
praise of Mary shows that she is just how willing she is just to totally put her trust in Almighty God. She's not willing to just to to just uh, hide away. She's not willing to just see if it was if, if this you know to, to say no to God. She's not willing to to turn away. She, her immediate response to God's uh, impossible task is yes, and not only yes. Yes, and thank you for, the, for this privilege of what you've given to me. You see, God, God doesn't give us think, want us to do things that only we can do. He wants us to do things that only He can do in our lives. Maybe it is just to get through a test that we never thought we could possibly get through. I remember talking to um, to, to some of you. Uh, to, well, I won't tell you who, but he, the, the worry about uh, taking a test. That was really difficult to take. And um, he had to trust God and had to pray, pray about it. And God gave him the 70% that he had to have. And passed. That's amazing. He has to trust God to get through those things. We have to say yes, Lord. And not only the yes, Lord, we, is a, is we need to continue to say yes, Lord, and thank you for the privilege of serving you, as we see in Mary's life. Then we see the results of that faith. We go on in verse chapter, chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. We see that merit, the, the results of, of, of being a faithful servant. And in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. The rest of the, the first registration took place while Quinerus, Quinerus was governor of Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from the, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the household of the line, family of the, of, the, of, the, of the family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and then was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and then she gave, gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in snuggling wrapped him snugly in cloth, and laid him in, a, in, him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for him in the end. God blesses her with the privilege of being the mother of his son. This 15-year-old girl was given an amazing task. Now she's been she's called upon to, 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 to nurture, to care for, to cuddle, to snuggle this one who would be king of king, Lord of Lords. This one who would be Emmanuel, God of us. This one who would change the world forever. My life. <coughs> what a privilege. God gives us these privileges. God calls us to do things, tasks that He would have us, only He can do. And then, he, then it turns out that it's not for His benefit, but it is so that we can be closer to Him. You see, everything God calls us to takes faith. I firmly believe that He doesn't ask us to do anything that we can do on our own. This is because God wants to draw us back to Him. Not so that He can be, because of He's egotistical, not because He desires to, um, to look good or to be amazing. He, he, he desires to have a relationship with us that, is, that, only he can, that only He can have. The men and women of the Bible show us this every time. God, God wants to walk us to walk closely with Him throughout our lives, depend on Him as a child depends on a parent. And while when He when He came into this world, He did not uh, need to use Mary. He did not need to go through the childbirth. He did not need to do any of these things. He could have just appeared. But he chose to show that he wanted to relate to us like no other God has, has ever done in this world. Mary had to have faith to believe that with God nothing is impossible. She had to have faith that 
that God would take care of her, that she could, that she wouldn't be put to death, she wouldn't have her life totally ruined, that she wouldn't be, be cast out, that she wouldn't be thrown aside by Joseph. She had to have faith in God, that God would accomplish what he desired to do, and that she only needed to be willing to be a servant of God. had to have faith that God would do the impossible. In this world today, God needs men and women that have that kind of faith. Today, God needs in our church men and women, young people, children, who have the faith that God can do the impossible, that God can do amazing things, that God can still do miracles in the world around us, that God can still change lives, that God can still do what exactly He says He can do, that God can still do anything that He desires to do. It will have faith. You know, in Scripture it tells us that we have the faith of a mustard seed, that we can move mountains. Is it the faith that moves the mountains or the faith that God can do the amazing that, we're, that that talks about? It's the faith that God can do the amazing. See, it's not our abilities that change the, thing, the things in this world. It's not our capabilities that, that God can do the things that He needs to do. It's because we, He can do the impossible and through a person that has faith, God can change things. Faith that is totally sold out to Almighty God. Faith that is willing to do the seeming impossible, faith that will stand up to the challenges of the day regardless of what they may be. Maybe that for you is faith that you can get through what you think you can't get through. For me, that was faith that God would get me through school. Faith that, that, that in a God that, that I could do the impossible. And that I could stand up before people and, and talk. Faith that, I, that, that if He wants me to stand before you and read from Scripture, I can do it. Not through my strength, but through His strength. Faith that, that I, can, I can walk out of this building and go where He calls me to go. And stand where He calls me to stand. And to stand up for what is right when he calls me to stand up for what is right. As we come to this time of the year and we, and we consider giving a gift, why not consider giving a gift to God? Maybe we consider giving a gift of our faith to Almighty God. A faith to go where he sends you to. A faith that says, what you, I'll do what you tell me to do. To live as he asks you to live. A faith to go and be and do whatever God asks you. Will you trust God and begin to say, with you, that is I trust God. you stand and, and say, I'm willing to do whatever, even if it means I might even know. You know, God may ask you to do some very difficult things in your life. But if you trust Him, He'll carry you through. What is it called? He's calling you to.
he'd wear those, those sunglasses, you know, like the dark sunglasses at school, and he'd walk around and his hair home the same as that guy. And, and man, I do not want to talk to this guy. Is there a guy like that in your school? And you don't want to have anything to do with it. God called me to be. Or maybe 